Welcome to lecture three, displaying variables in the console. The point of this lecture is to introduce you to the console window. I'm going to show you how we can take variables and, and many variables and display them into the console in a way to produce text that's meaningful to the application. Like, I, like we said before, the console is an easy way um, to write programs without having to learn a lot of code for dealing with GUI and graphical user interface. So to get started, let's go ahead and review a little bit of the last lecture and let's create a variable of all our basic types of data. In the first lecture, we only really went over integers of creating those. So we're going to create all five of the basic types of variables and then we'll display them into the console. So let's start off by creating an integer and we'll just give these all just random values for now. So we'll say int my int equals five. So an integer can hold a whole number. So we'll set the value five. A double can hold a decimal. So a 5.5 works fine here. Notice, however, if I try to do a 5.5 in integer, however, it's going to give me an error. So the red squiggly, like I said before, is an error. So it's not going to let me run my program because I have an error. So I'll change it back to five. So we have an int and a double. We have a string, like I said, can hold text. Now, one thing to note about a string is when we set the value of a string, we need to put it, put it in double quotes like this. So there, it, it, it gets surrounded with double quotes. The reason why we have to do that is because we have to indicate to the compiler that the text in this string is not actually another name to another variable because our variables are text. So we put quotes around it to indicate that, no, this is just a string. Ignore it. Don't try to search the code for other variables and things like that. So we put it in quotes. That's a string. Then we have a bool. A bool is a true or false value. So I'm going to say my bool equals true. So it can have true or false. That is it. Store in a bool. And then the last is a character. So I'm going to say character my character equals. Now with the character, you also need to put quotes around it. But this is single quotes. So we put single quotes and then we can put the character A or one character only inside of the character. So these are the five basic data types of creating them. We went over what it actually each component of the variable means. Now I just wanted to show you the example of all the five basic types and now we're going to actually display to the console so writing to the console is actually very easy there's two functions that we'll use mostly there's console.write so write and write line they differ a little bit and I'll explain that here in a second let's start with just write line so let's go ahead and try to print the value of my int to the console so like I said the syntax is console dot or a period, it's dot, right line. Now, inside of right line, there's going to be parentheses. These parentheses is where we put in information that right line needs in order to write line, to write to the console. So in order to write to the console, basically it, it wants something to write. So I'm going to say write my int. So my int goes in between the parentheses of the right line. So it's right line, then there's a parenthesis on both sides, and in between them, you put what you want to print. So I want to print my int, so I put my int. If I run this by hitting Control F5 or going to debug and clicking Start without debugging, it will run the program, and you'll see that my console window pops up and the value 5 is there. And the reason why the 5 is there is because I'm printing that. Let's go ahead and print all of them. So let's do my double. So let's do console dot right line. Then in the parentheses, I put what I want to print, which I want to print my double semicolon. Control F5 runs the program. And now you see the 5 and the 5.5. Let's do the rest. Console dot right line, my string. Console dot right line, my bool. And console dot right line, my character. So I'm writing all of them to the console. If I run it, we'll see the values of all my variables inside the console now. So 
The difference between console.writeLine and console.write is simply that write line writes the text and then goes to the next line automatically so that the next time you write something it's on a new line. Notice how all of these are on separate lines. So it first writes five and then the write line automatically goes to the next line so that the next time the next thing that's written to the console gets written on a new line. If we change it to write, you'll notice what happens. Watch. If I do console.write only my int, and then I do console.write again my double, watch what happens. When I run that, it says 5, 5.5 all next to each other because there's, it's staying on the same line. Write keeps on writing on the current line. Whereas right line will, will write on the current line, and then when it's done, it goes to the next line. So notice how if I put a right line here and then run it, you see it says 5, and then when it's done with the 5, it goes to the next line so that the 5.5 is on its own line. So the only thing to remember with that is write writes on the current line, and then right line writes on the current line, but then goes to the next line when it's done. So generally, I'll be using right line. I like to, to just put my text on different lines so that it's easy to read and understand. So now you may be wondering, okay, I have a way to print my variables to the console, but how do I print them together? I want to I wanna be able to print all of my variables maybe on the same exact line, or maybe I want to add some descriptive text. For example, what if I wanted to say, the value of my int is and then plug in whatever the value of my int is. So there are a couple of ways that we can actually go about doing this. The first way I'm gonna show you is using the placeholder method. The placeholder method basically allows us to place placeholders in a string, and then at the end of the, uh, of the string, we say, okay, put this there, put that there, put that there. It basically creates placeholders. So what I mean by that is, I want to display the words, the value of my int is, and then plug in the value of my int. So I'm going to use the placeholder. So I'm going to say console.writeLine, the value of my int is, now I'm going to do the placeholder. So the placeholder is a series of curly braces, and then inside is a numbering system. So zero simply means that is the first placeholder. Everything in programming normally starts with a zero base index. So we start at zero, then one, then two, then three. So zero indicates that this is the first placeholder. That's all zero means. The curly braces, that is the actual placeholder. And then I close my string. So this is my string that I'm trying to print with a placeholder. Now, how do I plug into the placeholder? So I simply put a comma. Now notice I'm still in the parentheses for the console.write line. As you can see, I put a comma, and then that means that the first thing that follows the first comma gets plugged into the first placeholder. So I want to plug in my int. Then I finish the parentheses, and I put my semicolon. So after the comma, there's only one int. So that gets put into the first placeholder. So boom, that gets placed into there. So when I run this now, you'll see that it says the value of my int is 5. 5 got placed into that placeholder variable. Let's try printing the uh, the double also. So let's add some more text. Let's say, and the value of my double is, and then we'll use another placeholder. So the next placeholder would be 1, because 0 is the first one, 1 is the second. So now I need to plug in the second value. So I put another comma. And I do my double. So my int gets placed into the first placeholder. My double gets placed into the second placeholder. So when I run that, you can see it says the value of my int is 5. And the value of my double is 5.5. So they both got placed into their appropriate places. based of the, this is, So this is the placeholder method. So before I go and uh, show you the other way that we can basically um, combine variables and text and multiple variables together, um, I want to show you some of the things that you can do or one thing that you could do with the placeholders to organize your console output a little bit better. So basically, we can specify the, the alignment 
and the field size of our placeholders. For example, let's say I want to print, like, I, like, like we're doing now, I want to print the value of my int to the first placeholder. However, let's say that I wanted that, that placeholder to take five characters no matter what. Even though it's only one character, I want it to take up five spaces no matter what. So I can do that by simply putting inside the placeholder, I can say comma five. That means take up five places. So I'll do that for um, both of them. So if I run this, you can see that my five is taking up five spaces. Even though I'm only using one, it's still it's allocating space for five characters. If I increase my number to 555, five, five, for example, and then run it, you can see it didn't take up more room for the whole line. Rather, it's using those empty spaces that were allocated for it by that comma. So now I used up two more. So that comma five just means allocate a size of five characters for this placeholder. No matter, even if I'm only three characters, it'll still allocate the five. Now, notice how it's on the right side of the, the placeholder. So I can justify it or align it. So right now, it's right justified. So if I want to make it to the left-hand side, I can simply add a negative sign to the 5, and that means to do it on the other side. So when I run it now, now my empty spaces are on the right-hand side. So now the text is on the left-hand side. So using this is a really powerful tool that you can create charts um, and organize your text really well with this simple placeholder technique. Okay, so the last thing I want to do is I want to show you the last way that we can combine text with variables and, and really make our console write line statements mean something. So the last thing we can use, the, the last method we can do is concatenation. And basically, concatenation uses the plus sign or the, the plus operator. And basically allows us to combine strings and text together. So I can mimic this by using the plus. For example, if I want to say console.writeLine, the value of my int is, so the placeholder, I mean the concatenation method combines strings together. So I first end this string like that, then I use the plus sign, and then I combine what I want to combine it with. So I'm going to say I want to add my int to it. So notice I'm using the plus sign instead of the comma to separate it here. And notice how I'm also I leave a space there because it's combining this string with the my int variable. So if I didn't have a space there, they would be on top of each other. So let me just show you that this works first. So control F5. Notice how I get the same output right there. The value of my int is 555. So it combined the strings properly. But if I took out this string, that's empty space right there and ran it, you'll see that now is 555 is on top of each other. So I need to make sure that space is there. The concatenation method literally just combines the strings together. Um, whereas the placeholder method, you can actually see and add the text around it a little bit easier. So if I want to finish this and add the double version of it, I need to co uh, combine and concatenate after this. So I need to go like this. And the value of my double is, close the string again, plus my double. So basically, every time I want to add, I need to close off the string. So the text needs to be closed off. And then I add the plus sign to concatenate or add the variable that I want to it. To it. So I say the value of my int is, cut that string off. Then I'm saying plus, add, attach this string to it, or attach this integer to it. Then, okay, now attach another string after it. So I use the plus sign again, and then I attach another string. Then I say, okay, now attach a double. So I use a plus sign, and then I attach a double. So the plus, the, using the concatenation method, is a little bit harder, um, but it allows you to do the same exact effect. So if I run this, you can see I now have the value of my is 555, and the value of my double is 5.5. So I, I, I plug them both in the same exact way. So these are the two methods that you can use to combine text together. Okay, so that is it for this lecture. In the next, lex in the next lecture, we're going to be talking about arithmetic operators. And basically, that just means that we can 
start adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing, and some other things, we can basically manipulate our data a little bit more.